They're all good morning on this somewhat rainy day from this studio from the EY Amsterdam office. My name is René Carillo and I have the pleasure to lead our CFO consulting practice. And today we're going to talk to you about hyper automation in the finance space. And in this age, you cannot do that alone. We believe in ecosystems. And that's why I'm very proud that today it's not only EY bringing the message to you, but together with two of our very valued partners, Yokoi and Robusta. So today with me, their founders, Philip and Murat. Welcome both. Um, Murat, we're very happy actually that he is here because he left his car somewhere in the streets because he broke down, but that's the commitment that he has to this topic because we really want to bring his message to you all. Um, today, I hope that you will enjoy the topics that we have. It's a very well prepared agenda. It's very suitable for the age that we are in. And I I'm very sure that US finance or other type of professionals will for sure gain a lot out of this. I will hand over to the superstar of our firm in this space, Özgür. Thank you very much, René, uh, for the nice introduction. And uh, well, uh, welcome, everyone. And we are glad to have Phil, and we're glad to have Murat here today with you. Uh, let me just walk you quickly uh, through the agenda of today. So we have a very packed agenda that, will, that we believe will serve the needs of the uh, evolving CFO role we see in the market. So we'll begin uh, with a quick introduction of ourselves, uh, and then we'll walk you through um, uh, the trends that we see in the market, both from a finance perspective and also from uh, a technology perspective. And uh, right after that, we will continue with some introduction of our uh, valuable partners here, Yoko and Robusta, and how they address the challenges of the CFOs in the market. And then we'll see how we bring RPA and AI to most prominent technologies in the market that we see to um, cater to the needs of the evolving CFO role. So uh, throughout the panel, throughout the webinar, uh, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A section. We will try to address them uh, at the end of our uh, s uh, session. So uh, let's, let's make it as interactive as possible. Feel free to drop your questions anytime you like. Well, again, welcome, gentlemen. And Rene, thank, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. This being said, I will begin with the trends and what we see in the market from a CFO and from a high automation perspective. Um, what we have done as EY in last year, we have uh, surveyed more than 1,000 finance professionals uh, across the globe, uh, being CFOs and finance directors and you know, uh, finance leaders, and to understand what their challenges are in the market, what keeps them awake at night. And what we try to do, uh, we try to put them in three pillars that can be addressable, that can be traceable in a sense that we can uh, make sure that we help them with their pains. So one of the things that we saw, uh, one of the biggest challenges that we saw, especially in 2023 and 2024, is the paradox of making a plan between near term and long term. So we know that CFOs are now um, not able to sleep properly because they have a huge pressure uh, between keeping the right balance of short-term efficiency, I'm not saying even growth, short-term efficiency, cost optimization, and long-term value. And surprisingly, uh, almost half of the CFOs uh, and leaderships are also find themselves in the midst of a transformation where they take the role of a more leading role within the organization. So this is, we know that this is a huge, huge task to accomplish. Yeah. The second thing that we saw in the market is between safety and boldness. When we say safety, it's mostly about risk. You know, so we know that CFOs face this challenge of balancing the risk awareness in the market because of the regulations, because of many data points that they might have, because of the fluctuations we see in the market, but also being bold in terms of taking the decision and navigate their ship towards the well uh, less stormy domains of business. So. Uh, this is also one of the things that we saw very um, crucial for the CFOs and finance leaders in the market to be addressed. And we will talk in the coming uh, minutes how we can address it with a hyper automation in mind. And last but not least, also, it's the balance between uh, strategic leadership and traditional skill sets. So we talked about cost efficiency, we talked about long-term and short-term values, we talked about risk awareness, we, we talked about the leadership, but we are also aware that these are all related to a talent pool that is also evolving in the finance domain. So traditionally, finance professionals, they were uh, focused on their domain, but now what we see in the finance domain, 
technology is playing a prominent role. So these are the three things that we came across when we surveyed more than 1,000 finance leaders uh, throughout the globe. So um, I would also recommend to all of, the, all of, all of our attendees today uh, to go through the DNA of the CFO survey that we did uh, in 2023. It's a very comprehensive documentation about how, what kind of challenges CFOs go through and how we can address them, both from a strategy perspective, but also from a technology perspective. And on top of this, what we have also done is we have worked with one of our prominent um, partners, Forrester, in terms of understanding if these challenges are mapped to the challenges that we see in the business of automation. So also the four points that came to our attention were basically the same things. It was risk, it was cost, still growth, and on top of that, the talent. So what we know is that we are going through a paradigm shift, which is underway, that we are going from single platforms to a more automation fabric kind of doing business. So basically different platforms embedded with different technologies like RPA and, and AI as well. And we are making sure we are in a transition to make sure that automation fabric serves to the broader strategy of the company, not only addressing uh, you know, point on solutions, point on problems, but also addressing that uh, first point that we mentioned, keeping uh, the, the problem of balancing the near term and, and long term benefits to the company. And the second portion is about, we are talking about a shift to higher level automation. So we know that the talent also requires a more automation in the sense that they feel belonging to the company. So we are trying to get rid of all those manual and repetitive tasks and also leveraging more and more AI which is one of the most important topics of today as well, and shifting to a higher level automation to make sure that our strategy is shaped around uh, the most and most efficient po way possible. And last but not least, well, it all goes back to data and integration. So we are talking about the shift uh, to what we call generation two, which I'll be mentioning very briefly in the coming slide, is uh, to make sure that we are harnessing data in each and every decision that we take. So to wrap all this up, what we see as UI from a hyper automation perspective uh, is an evolution of expanding ecosystem, which means that up until now in the last five to 10 years, we have benefited from the RPA to an extent that we have automated, um, well, point on processes and we have uh, used hard-coded uh, uh, boats to make sure that we solve some repetitive uh, tasks and make sure that we uh, leverage the automation in that sense. But I think we know that we have come to the end of this generation one. Now we are in the midst of generation two, which you see also on the screen. Majority of our clients, the customers that we speak with, they are in a transition of um, combining different platforms, combining different technologies, which we call hyper automation, basically the combination of AI and RPA. So RPA is there to stay, but it's to be leveraged with uh, new technology com components like uh, AI, and as well as more harnessing in the data. And what we see in the future, this is a more future-looking statement, we believe and we know that we will be looking at an AI-powered automation. So AI will be in the middle of all the orchestration system that will be uh, integrating all the data from different systems and triggering, AI, uh, triggering IPA. I think today uh, our partners also will give some examples about how to leverage AI in that sense, but we will be seeing that more and more in the future. And of course, here you will see that on the right-hand side of your screen, it's the cost efficiency moving towards a more strategic market differentiation for each and every company that is moving towards this journey. So uh, without further ado, uh, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to our valuable partners. So as I mentioned today, we have Yokoi and Robusta with us. Um, so I first want to welcome Phil. Uh, if, 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 if it's fine for you, Murat. And uh, sure, sure. I, I want just, well, Phil, first and foremost, welcome. And uh, I hope you have arrived here safely, not as Murat did. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you here as well. And uh, what I want to know is based also, uh, based on what uh, I have discussed right now, can you share a little bit of the inspiration that led you uh, found Yokoi and what kind of challenges you address in the domain of spend management, expense management, and how Yoko aims to help the finance professionals, in a sense. Yes, so first of all, thanks a lot for having me. Um, 
Yes, I'm Phil, co-founder and CEO of Yokoi. And I'm an accountant myself, but more importantly, I realized that finance and technology gets closer and closer or got closer and closer over time. And that the challenges in finance, they need to be addressed differently than they used to be. Yep. The best example there is probably we used to be thinking in silos. We thought about a new expense management process. Then we thought about a new card reconciliation or management process or a new invoice automation or invoice process. Um, in accounting terms, we're talking accounts payable. Mm -hmm. All the cost data, everything you spend as a company, um, and you were still thinking in different silos. So you had different tools where employees were logging into to approve an invoice, approve a receipt, a trip, or something that was paid with a company card could actually be related to an invoice or related to an expense. Mm -hmm. So why do we need different tools, especially today when integrating tools with each other is quite a challenge, not only to do it, but also to maintain these integrations. And um, so we thought we're going to be bold. We want to do something that was not really a thing out there. It was not really a category out there. So we want to do spend management. And most of the people were like, but what is spend management? And spend management for us is really everything a company spends. So it is basically the streamlined process of expense management, invoice processing, and card management or card processing. So all the cost data in one single tool with the integration to obviously the finance tool in travel tools in case you want to integrate the travel and expense process and stuff like that. So for us, breaking down those silos mm -hmm. into one streamlined process, but really being the best at them. And that's where the entire AI comes in at the end. It's like, we didn't just want to build a new tool. Because let's be honest, building software is something that gets cheaper over time. Yeah. And the quality also gets actually better over time. So it's not really, you can't really go out there today anymore and say, hey, by the way, I built a new software. Oh, wow, this is so great. And um, you really need to add something more to it. And with us, that's the AI piece. So before we even had a tool, we had the AI. And it's actually quite weird because we were doing stuff in the background. Um, and my co-founder, Davis Lucy, he comes from ETH and from CERN, you know, the particle physics yep, yep, um, thing yep. in Geneva. Um, and he brings in that technology aspect. For him, AI is basically the reason why Yokoi, not only today, but also in the future, will be the go-to platform um, for everything cost spend related. And for me, I'm really bringing in that accounting perspective because mm -hmm. they're hard rules. Mm -hmm. They're rules you need to admire to and you need to, they're regulations you just need to follow. There's no, not much of, of, of wiggle room there. But on the other hand, there's so much you can do with AI. I'll give you one example. Today, companies still have travel policies looking at expense management. I hate to say it, but travel policies are stupid. <laughs> because a travel policy tells you, maybe for, for London, you're allowed to spend 200 pounds a night. Well, that, is, that, that doesn't help you much because you don't travel always during the same time. You, you might be traveling to London yeah. when there is a Justin Bieber concert in London. <laughs> That means, or, or Tyler Swift or whatever is, is, is in today. Um, so that means that during those times, hotel prices are just up. Yeah. It's absolutely normal. If you want your employees to stay in a three-star hotel, four-star hotel, that you should not give them a 200-pound limit. It should really depend on the time, on the night yeah. you're actually spending there. So that's where the entire AI piece is coming into. It's hard to really put that in a rule. You need something to compare all the data we have to really make sure that we can have that sense check, that check that is much more than just a rule behind. That's something that really takes into account 
all the data from a specific company, but also all the data we can get from mm -hmm. the internet and around. Well, I think that, that was going to be my second question to you, but Sorry. I think you addressed it already. <laughs> so I was just going to ask, and this is a very valid, valid point, I think, um, the distinction between a process-based um, solution and an AI. How do you see that was going to be my next question, but I think you put it quite clearly. But maybe a few words on that as well, uh, if you want to share. Sure. It's all about uh, two things. It, it's, it's all about the data and the learning effect, I guess. So. On one hand, if you really bring in that AI aspect, you need a lot of data because you need to make sure that um, whatever decision is taken or whatever we are giving you as a, as a result is based on not just two, three data points, but really on a lot of data. Yeah. But the more important part is really the learning effect. Artificial intelligence is like human intelligence. It's not smart when it starts out. Like a baby. A baby needs to learn everything, a lot of data is taken into account to learn what can I do? Should I touch a stove? Um, maybe not if it's hot. Um, so all that stuff that a baby goes through or a small child goes through, also AI goes through. And that's why we said every, so Yokoi is basically building spend management uh, processes or automating spend management processes for mid-sized companies. And the good thing about the mid-sized companies, they have quite a lot of people and data. So we can not only have the data from all over the co companies on an anonymized basis, but really having specialized AI models for each and every customer mm -hmm. that learns on their setup over time mm -hmm. and gets better. Mm -hmm. Hope that answered it. Perfect. No, that answers. And it also gives me a lot of, I echo with the saying that uh, AI is like a child. With, uh, I have a two-year-old son at home. So I am the process-driven one. And he is the intelligent one who is learning and learning. <laughs> so uh, I think it's always good to keep a balance in that sense. But yeah, thank you, Phil, uh, for the nice introduction and for the valuable uh, examples that you gave. Uh, maybe this being said, I'll just uh, turn to Murat. Murat, welcome again. And, thank you very much. Sorry for the hassle that you had uh, while you were arriving here. I hope you will find your car in a safe uh, position. So, but uh, I, I, I know Robusta and I know what you're doing in the market. And you, I know that your also motto is about automating the business end to end as much as uh, possible. So yeah. in that uh, sense, would you like to as well give us a brief introduction of what Yoko is, what you do, uh, sorry, what Robusta is and what you do and how you address the challenges of the finance leaders today in 2023 and 24 almost. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Ergür. Uh, it is, uh, first of all, it is uh, nice being uh, here, though I have uh, some problems, but uh, I think for uh, it is really nice, uh, the part of this uh, webinar. So before uh, answer your question, just a little background, uh, how we uh, decided uh, to uh, found the Robusta. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent uh, 30 years uh, in the IT industry, especially uh, in the business applications area means that uh, I involved a lot of ERP, CRM type of uh, deliveries for many uh, customers, with many uh, industries, and in the different cultures. Mm -hmm. So during all these uh, projects, so I work uh, closely with the uh, business users and understand their challenges and observed, I had a chance to observe what are the challenges in the, uh, in the companies, so then, uh, so yeah, I can just uh, maybe mention a couple of them. Yeah. Uh, Please. Yeah, first of all, these uh, delivery, the project deliveries takes long, but our life changes, uh, you know, so fast. Really fast, yeah. And uh, time to market is shortened, uh, regulation changes frequently, uh, market changes dynamically, and IT is uh, slow to respond to this uh, change. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is a you know, of the IT cycles takes long. Then uh, the, another major problem is, uh, yeah, the, 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 most of the projects are failing because of the disconnect between IT and uh, business, mm -hmm. because business wants something, but IT delivers something else. So then uh, all the efforts are uh, lost. So then uh, what also I see, as the IT, we put a lot of effort to deliver something, but at the end, uh, uh, business also puts a lot of efforts, and uh, we give them some tools to digitalize their processes. Mm -hmm. But still, after the projects, business spends a lot of time 
to uh, make these applications up and running, yeah. they put, uh, they put, uh, they need to put a lot of information, just uh, bring uh, data from outside, uh, etc. A lot of interaction. Mm -hmm. So this means uh, that the business is burdened with a lot of repetitive tasks and also the time-consuming tasks. So they put a lot of effort and at the end they are facing these uh, challenges. So uh, keeping in these uh, challenges, uh, I, I thought this is, uh, we need a different approach because it takes uh, a lot of time uh, from them. Then uh, uh, I thought we need to empower the users mm -hmm then they can do their own stuff, not depending on too much on the IT, because IT is, uh, anyway, it is, they are busy and they have a lot of uh, critical uh, projects, etc. But uh, automating uh, the business user's needs is a less priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then another thing, we need to prevent a disconnect between uh, IT teams and uh, business teams, uh, so they can talk the same language, and uh, then the, it can be better uh, aligned. So all these, uh, keeping all these facts, I uh, co-founded Robusta, addressing these challenges. And uh, yeah, I will just uh, maybe in the next uh, section, I mm -hmm. will uh, give the overview what we are really uh, offering to our uh, customers. I, I would love to hear that. And one of the things that I realized when you say it's really coming from the software and all those vendor uh, background, also, one of the things that I realize is, is basically the business impact is not easy to see in those kind of huge scale projects. So I think there's always a disconnect between the business and the IT teams. That's totally I agree with. And also uh, what you said, Phil, uh, the fragmented, the siloed way of doing business is something that also hinders the success in many of those projects. Yeah. So um, I think what you say, also from a talent perspective, it quite resonates with the fact that we found in the CFO survey is that the talent is changing as well, right? So the people that we work with, they're not IT or business anymore. We are talking about finance professionals who have um, now more competency in, in IT or in, you know, yeah. uh, that's why yours kind of platforms I think from a you know, user friendliness, no, no code platform kind of approaches is helping them to be enabled to deliver their best. Yeah, maybe wanting to more yes. add to your, uh, what you say. You know, when we talk to the, uh, our customers, we also see uh, you know, new uh, generation doesn't want to work uh, in this way because the way of working should also transform because young generation doesn't want to involve to these repetitive tasks, etc. because they are more creative than us because they are uh, in, they're born to the different world than us. So yep. uh, today's applications and uh, IT landscape is designed for yesterday. So anyway, we need to adapt also these uh, changes because number of also transactions also increasing. It is not, and also it is not easy to handle uh, and respond to these uh, facts. Yep, I, I totally agree. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, there is nothing that I can add on top of this, but. Uh, it's true that everyone is asking for the Google or the Amazon experience, as they call it. So when you just do your shopping Amazon quite easily, and then you go back to your work, and then there is a, a platform, I don't know, whatever, to manage your expenses. So you do your spend management, and it's from, I don't know, uh, 2000s, 1990s, fragmented. You click on many things, and it just doesn't bring you the value. It just doesn't fit in today's business. I totally agree. And maybe from this point onwards, I'll take your pass and maybe turn to Phil in that sense. Uh, we know Yoko as an AI powered platform and you are operating in the dom domain of um, uh, spend management and expense management, but how do you elaborate, how do you leverage AI to uncover hidden uh, patterns in, 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 in the domain of spend management? So could you also shed some light on that, uh, Phil? Yes, absolutely. So imagine an invoice comes in, a yep. lot of line items, so what used to be is that for each and every line item, you were looking whether there was already an order there, a purchase order, whether it was already approved. But this is kind of the very basic things that, uh, that you could probably also do with the, the tools you mentioned from the 2000s or 1990s. It's much more about the intelligent part of that. So what is within the norm? and it goes quite far. It's like how many hours consulting, for instance, um, did you actually agree on? How much did you then consume? Yeah. What do you need to pay? What was the discount that was uh, agreed on? 
on which cost centers or on which cost centers split does that typically go? Who was the person receiving it? Or what was the cost center project receiving it? Um, when you look into material, even worse, it's like you order a ton of steel, you get delivered one truck of steel. It's like, good luck reconciling that. Yeah. And you paid some of it up front. With, and another part, when the truck driver comes, you pay with the car. It's like there is a whole complexity level there with a lot of different reconciliation and also approval tasks, which at the end in finance, for me, what's relevant is basically the input, the process, the approval process, and then very relevant, the booking. How do I book that? Because that then defines what still gets paid out in the next payment run. Um, how do I actually, how fast am I able to close my books? How real time do I have insights mm -hmm. into where are we standing? So I could give you a lot of different examples on invoicing, on, on, on expense management, travel, but also cards, and that's an interesting one because with cards, it's a problem that newly arose in the last years. Uh, software, you want to buy software and you don't really know how much you're going to pay mm -hmm. because it's based on usage. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is based on usage, server usage, um, number of active users or something. We all know it if you, you buy your, I don't want to... Um, make any other times, but you buy your Zoom <laughs> license or, or Microsoft Teams license or whatever else is out there. At the end, you pay how much you actually use, how many people you have. So you put a card, like this is your card. That's what I was going to ask. I see <laughs> a card there. Right? Yeah. You, you, put, you put a card behind, and it suddenly gets into the subscription management. Mm -hmm. So how much do we, so what do, did you pay? What did you order? What's kind of normal? How many employees do you have? How much usage do you have? What do you, what do you still want to actually look at manually? And what do you actually fully automatically want to have processed through? Mm -hmm. And that is that complexity <laughs> level that, is, that was added in the last couple of years, where it's truly not, it's not one or zero. Mm -hmm. There is some wiggle room, especially if do you want your Zoom license to be a proved or still manually looked at by a person just because you had one more license, I don't mm -hmm. know, $12 more. Mm -hmm. Like probably not because it costs you more to have a manager looking at that and then a finance person looking at that. But if suddenly your number of, um, number of users double in a month, yeah, you probably want to have that. Yeah. You want to have a manual check. So it's not always that one and zero. It, you really want to have that level of we call it warnings. Mm -hmm. You want to give mm -hmm. out warnings that tell you as the end user, do I still want to look at it? And if I look at it, what do I look at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we make it really easy in the entire process to make sure that you don't look at those, you don't do those repetitive mm -hmm. manual tasks anymore. You only look at the outliers and the exceptions. And that's where the entire math and the AI piece comes in. Um, it makes perfect sense because especially in the subscription economy as you say it's something that you don't want to follow manually you, yeah. you don't want to follow up manually and uh, I totally understand where AI puts the value in terms of recognizing the you know the, the patterns in those spending uh, trends let's, let's say let's put it that way and you had actually a very good point in the introduction when you mentioned the entire and risk mm -hmm. awareness. As a CFO, as a finance person, you want to you want to be aware of your risks and you want to mitigate them with different controls and all of that. And that's where, in the old world, a credit card used to be probably the worst nightmare of a CFO. Because yeah. you give out the credit card, I don't know, limit ten thousand euros, and everyone's like. Oh, what if my employees run away with that and buy a new BMW or whatever? Um, and on the other hand, even if they use it for business purposes, at the end of the month, you get a credit card statement, yeah. and then you start running around for invoices to reconcile. Um, and unfortunately, today, this is still in the mindset of a lot of finance professionals. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is the exact opposite. Today, a card is probably the safest way and the, the way with the least risk because the new cards are much different. Mm -hmm. And a card for me is something that I can basically give full control 
to the finance team, which in the past didn't, didn't, this didn't used to be the case. Mm -hmm. Because today you can, for instance, so not all cards are physical anymore. Actually, quite a few cards are just physical. Most of the cards are just digital. Yep. So they're basically tokens. And then you limit them. You say, I, I need a card for my Zoom license. So you limit, you two clicks, I need a new card. Um, I limit it to Zoom only. So you cannot do anything except for Zoom with that card. And you limit it to, I don't know, 5,000 euros a month. Mm -hmm. Then what you have is, a, and you can even make sure that you, you add an approval step. I don't recommend it. Don't add too much of that. <laughs> but um, you really, let, let the business flow. But you could, in case you want to start out with or get a bit of the feeling. But what can happen with, with that card? Nothing. Mm -hmm. In worst case, someone goes and buys Zoom licenses <laughs> for 5K, um, which you probably need anyway. So yeah. you have this full control level with a card today, um, while in the past this used to be something very risky. So that's how mm -hmm. that's one good example in how um, things are changing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also as innovators, and I call myself or ourselves as Yoko, one of the disruptors, innovators. We need to push CFOs. Mm -hmm. We need to bring CFOs in and tell them about the new story and also a bit poke them to do something different because, I mean, we all know if you, if, if you digitize a shitty process, you have a shitty digitized process. And <laughs> this is really what you don't want anymore. And with the capabilities of AI, of the Visa network, we, use with, we work with Visa, I'm sure that works also with MasterCard and all the others, but with that network and those controls, we are playing in a completely different league. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where we become, and that's where you guys become extremely important because that's when consulting work is truly needed. We need to educate yep. um, the, new, uh, the, the CFO of the future. We need to make sure that we're getting those processes are we getting the most out of the tooling that we have to really automate end to end? Mm -hmm. And uh, one last thing before I move to Murat. Uh, you said we have to convey this story to the CFOs and the CFOs of the future. Uh, if you were to pick a story that you have previously successfully done and to tell broadcast to the CFOs of the futures today, uh, which one would you pick? Which one would you pick from a cost efficiency perspective is one of the most successful projects that you've done as Yokoi? Yes. So it, it highly depends on the pain point of a CFO. This is really important for me. For some CFOs, it's very important to understand their cost better. Mm -hmm. So all cost data flows through your coin. All cost, every single dollar, except for intra-company transactions, stuff like that. But it, we basically were able to give them real-time access, what was bought, who bought it, and much more than that, how was it bought? Mm -hmm. Was it bought with a invoice or how was it paid what did you actually pay for paying it because mm -hmm. cards are not free invoices are not free and especially if you then do cross-border business it was paid in that currency i mean you go much more into that cost data analysis this is certainly one point but also um just cost saving on the process is probably the most prominent aspect and mm -hmm. there's one study that says uh, it costs you $60 to process one single expense receipt. $60. Wow. Yeah. This is crazy. Yes. And I think 13, 13 euros for an invoice because it makes sense. It comes in, you start doing the work, assigning, you send it to people, you probably send it back, you need to cross through some things, you need to adjust, to book it, you need to archive it, you need to pay it. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, so. It, you want to bring those $60 or those 13 euros down, and our goal at Yokoi is to bring it down below $1 mm -hmm. and below one euro. It's a, it's a very ambitious goal, and I'm totally supporting you with that. Maybe one minute on what you have achieved with Doenco. So I would like to hear that story as well. I'm quite familiar with that to an extent, but I would also love to hear it from you. Yes, very, yes. Um, so Doenco is an amazing company, customer of ours. They do catering all over the world. Um, if you have sat on a uh, Austrian Airlines flight, also a customer of ours, but if you're sat on an Austrian Airlines flight, you have probably gotten food from Donko. Donko does catering in Formula One, for instance. Yep. So 
they're all over the world. They do Formula One in Abu Dhabi. They do, you know. So for them, it is hugely important to have a tool that is global. It just needs to cover from Brazil to whatever country, everything. And that's where we come into play. We are really covering their complexity and the process is to make sure that they can close their books within a couple of days mm -hmm. and they have those processes. They don't lose money on all those administrative tasks. So for them, it was all about getting a, pro a global process in place that makes sure that invoice or receipt or card to booking to paying within a few days. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you for the story. And I might have some other questions. And if you don't have from the uh, audience, I will uh, maybe ask some questions on that. But now returning to Murat. So uh, Murat, from your perspective, I would also love to hear um, how the health finance teams, how they position Robusta and your solutions to help the next generation CFOs run their business more efficiently. What kind of challenges, what kind of pain points do you address? Uh, actually, uh, just uh, before that, uh, maybe uh, Robusta, you can think Robusta as your uh, super efficient digital assistant. Whatever manual task you are doing in your uh, company, uh, you can just uh, easily automate without writing any code or knowing any technical skills. So that gives a flexibility for you to uh, automate everything because mm -hmm. uh, in if uh, you don't have to do your yourself, then you need to go to IT. This is the alternative. Then it gives you very flexibility. Then, yeah, just I just want to walk through one example for we implemented for one customer, mm -hmm. for example, uh, for a bank, you apply a loan. Mm -hmm. When you apply a loan, you just submit your uh, ID, your application form, and also your pay slips. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the bank checks all the uh, data, and based on the data, they decide you get the loan or not. Yeah. So as RPA solution, it is uh, very uh, easy to build it uh, with the Robusta. We extract information from the documents that the uh, client sends and validate the data that is sent and uh, input into the system. And using our uh, customizable uh, rule engine, we can uh, decide if uh, the client is uh, OK mm -hmm. to get the loan or not. So of course, uh, it is if you can automate this one without uh, writing any code, and if tomorrow any changes are required, it is a really uh, important uh, flexibility for the uh, finance teams because otherwise, uh, any if it is dynamically changes, new rules comes, then you have to go to IT. This mm -hmm. really flexible. To, uh, you can see here some examples where we can automate, but these are the just examples. Uh, you can think uh, in any uh, department, any uh, uh, manual uh, operations mm -hmm. can be mimicked uh, by the uh, robust robots and automate easily. So uh, they can, the, the business can focus to uh, their value added tasks. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, when we come to Robusta, when we build it Robusta, we uh, look at uh, yeah, these challenges that I mentioned uh, earlier. So that's the reason we uh, made it very easy to use product and anyone can use uh, then uh, dependence on the IT is less. So we also uh, made it the BPM native. So the uh, BPM business process management yep. technology is in use long time. And uh, it is also to align the IT and business. So mm -hmm. it is a, uh, a very simple notation, just to build processes in a simple way with, uh, with no code approach. So uh, also this uh, gives uh, flexibility, uh, utilize the business rule manager, then uh, your, if the business rule changes, then you don't need to change the flow itself, but uh, just change uh, rules in a central way. Mm -hmm. So you can also centrally manage your business rules. Also, uh, we are embedding uh, a lot of AI capabilities because, uh, yeah, we, we uh, need to leverage uh, AI capabilities uh, to uh, offer, you know, uh, to make more smarter decisions and analyze the data and based on the data analy analytics, then we can uh, automate further. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, based on this, we give the embedded chatbot 
So we give the unified uh, UI for the uh, automating uh, the chatbot flows, uh, business uh, process flows, everything in the same uh, unified experience and simple. So you don't need to go to uh, some other tools to make mm -hmm. your process successful. So we give uh, all in one concept, simple, but uh, all in one concept, you can automate uh, everything in a single uh, place. Okay. Perfect. Well, I think very well summarized. And uh, I see also a lot of value to the finance professionals in that sense. So you are talking about agility, first and foremost. You say yeah. that the processes might change, but with the business process manager, at least with those changes, can be applied to business quite easily. That's what I understand yeah. from what you're saying. And also, uh, I've heard as well some AI capabilities, some NLP, natural language processing, I assume, uh, yeah. with WhatsApp and also maybe other channels as well. This is also, uh, I understand that it should increase the user adoption. For me, one of the things coming from software background, right? From I've been with those big vendors for all my life, and what I've seen is the adoption portion. So it's not easy to make sure that the business gets the added value. So if you don't input the data properly, if you don't use the system properly, then there is no AI for the data, uh, for the system to you know, build their capabilities on. So in that sense, I also feel that uh, you are leveraging the end users from a user adoption perspective, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, that's true, uh, because as you mentioned, uh, the financial decisions are data driven. So yeah. if the data is not uh, correct, anyway, uh, you cannot give the correct uh, decision. So that's the reason uh, the data entrance and all this managing the data is very critical. Uh, so the RPA uh, plays a great role here because uh, users can make mistakes, but RPA doesn't. Mm -hmm. So uh, also, giving this uh, do-it-yourself approach uh, uh, now yeah. enables users uh, to automate their solutions uh, by their own. Uh, also, uh, at the end, uh, they can collaborate with uh, some, uh, because we have a very active community. Mm -hmm. uh, in this community, they can get insights from some other uh, uh, finance teams and uh, innovation through the active uh, co uh, community is uh, also helping uh, the uh, Definitely. customers to uh, automate more. And of course, also you are upskilling your employees because uh, it is a new technology anyway, and we need to adapt to this technology because uh, AI come, uh, will uh, even uh, play a big role in our life. So mm -hmm. it is uh, RPA is a kind of opening the doors for the AI enabler kind of AI platforms. So if uh, these uh, customers can adopt uh, this technology early and experiment early, then the employees also upskilled and ready for the next venture. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's also uh, we see important uh, aspect of uh, uh, this uh, paradigm. OK, perfect, perfect. Maybe just to wrap your portion as well, um, you mentioned a, a loan a case in a bank, but yeah. is there any other case study or you know real life case that you want to share with us yeah. so that we can uh, as well? Yeah, we bring uh, it to flesh. We implemented a lot of uh, process, but just to give you how RPA and uh, AI uh, works, you know, uh, together. So just example, you know, uh, one of our customer uh, needs to uh, for the uh, trial balance. I think. Uh, Reconciliation is a big problem yep. for any companies. And uh, it is at the end of the month, they need to reconcile, uh, and it is always a problem. So uh, then uh, with this customer, uh, what we have done, we uh, extract the data from the different sources. And uh, using uh, the RPA, this part is RPA extracting the data and uh, analyzing this data and detecting anomalies and alerting the business to fix uh, these errors beforehand. Uh, then we made it daily. Then they don't need to wait uh, the, uh, end, at the end of the month. So it really uh, sharing the time uh, and effort mm -hmm. they spent uh, to, uh, and also it became really accurate. Uh, yeah, the accuracy, data accuracy increased uh, 99%. And uh, also the exception handling. Now with the RPA, you can also properly define how you want to ex uh, handle the exceptions and also reinforce 
to learn from these exceptions and uh, also automate this space. Now they are at the 99% uh, accuracy, but over the time it can even uh, be become uh, better. Well, that, that's one of the most so, important things. Uh, yeah. yeah, also maybe I can just mention another one. Uh, yeah, yeah. The vendor payment is also another issue, especially for the e-commerce mm -hmm. uh, companies. Uh, we have a, a big uh, e-commerce uh, client and uh, you know they have platform uh, a lot of orders are coming and they uh, fulfill these orders through uh, vendors mm -hmm. but uh, you know the, the paying this vendor invoices is uh, there should be in the timely manner also when they pay uh, based on the uh, agreed uh, terms mm -hmm. they get some discounts etc mm -hmm. but uh, because the number of invoices is really too uh, big. They cannot handle, and they miss a lot of uh, deadlines, etc. This, uh, what we have done with them, uh, we get uh, the information. Uh, we RP extracted the vendor history, and analyzing this history, we just rank uh, the vendors, mm -hmm. uh, their volumes, etc. We given certain uh, ranking. And also, uh, we defined. Uh, also, we also check uh, the contracts, their uh, payment term, discount uh, amount, etc. Using this business rule manager, then uh, we easily uh, decided uh, when to pay. Uh, so it's also uh, increased the vendor satisfaction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and correctly uh, addressed uh, which vendor is important. And this process really became a smooth uh, for the uh, client. Perfect. Well, I think it's an interesting story as well. I think I hear a lot of risk awareness here. I hear a lot of, uh, re you know, avoiding repetitive manual tasks. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's quite valuable. But, well, unfortunately, the, well, good thing and a bad thing, the time is passing by really fast, which means that we will be uh, slowly wrapping up the session. But um, I think what we've heard from both of you, from both Yokoi and Robusta, very valuable. Um, addressing very deep business cases, business pains, with very valuable technological competencies. And in the end, we know that all these technological components we see in the market, they're complementing each other. So they will be coming together. So just to wrap up, just to bring IPA, process, AI, all together. Uh, maybe my question to you first, Phil. Uh, what do you see in the market? What kind of trends do you see in the market in terms of integrating with several platforms and, and the, the uh, evolving IT landscape in that sense? in terms of creating value for the business? Yes, so on one hand, certainly you want to have as, as few tools as possible, but still best of breed. You still want to connect those tools. And that's what we stand for. Spend management is, is, is truly an area in our opinion mm -hmm. that, um, and I'm still waiting for the first spend management RFP. People are still in the old world. It's like, I need a new expense management tool. Let's put out an expense management RFP. No, you do not. I mean, you need a new spend management. So I, I'm really still waiting for maybe someone is here um, who could uh, let that dream come true. <laughs> the first spend management RFP, really that breaking down those silos, using AI not only over all customers, but really for each specific customer to learn on their data, learn on their behavior. Mm -hmm and um, to get the process automated, including the controls needed with cards or without cards, really for the, to cover that risk aspect. But uh, probably a little bit of a sneak peek, what yep. we are working on right now for the future, um, is AI-based integrations. Really cool. Well, and that's quite aligned with what we see in the generation three. So I'm happy to hear that. It, it, it's very exper experimental because um, integrations are still a hassle to do mm -hmm. um, for a lot of. Co the bigger the tool, the the more customized it typically is, and the less standardized also the integration is. But all an integration does is basically it takes data from one tool potentially does something or not even, and then feeds it into another tool. That's it. So if you could, or if we can leverage AI there, we can certainly not only build integrations faster, also let them adopt. Mm -hmm. Because 
And um, each tool develops also further over time. So tools are today not just standing still. At least the good tools are <laughs> developed further and in, at a fast pace. So you need to make sure that also the integration keeps pace. And that's where we're currently experimenting with AI-based integration, which will be coming hopefully very soon. Wow, happy to hear that. And excited to hear that as well. Thank you. And the same question goes for you, Murat, as well. What do you see in the future You know, bringing AI RPA process process automation together. What kind of added values we can create for the finance professionals? Yeah, I told the Robusta is easy to use, but even uh, I think good news we will make it even easy to more than easy to use. Uh, you know the large language models now in our life. So uh, even the design at the end today, as you mentioned, we uh, the RPAs are kind of hard coded, but it is easy. But still, you need to configure to uh, replicate the human actions. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, uh, utilizing the large language model approach, ChatGPT kind of interactions, users will interact with the bots and uh, tell in the natural uh, language mm -hmm. what he wants to automate. Then we will translate it into the actions and automate process on behalf of them. So even they don't need to uh, spend their time to automate. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, we are working on this release and uh, soon it will be ready for the uh, use. So of course, uh, yeah, we are also uh, having these uh, interactions through the different messaging channels, channels kind of WhatsApp or uh, etc. So then even uh, we are see, we see UI-less applications are coming. Even mm -hmm. no one wants to log into any applications. All the applications uh, that we, all the business applications will be sitting at the back, uh, and even employees will not interact with them, or uh, vendors or customers. But they will interact with through the. Uh, let's say the, uh, everything will be the mobile through the messaging channels, etc. Mm -hmm. So we foreseen this and we are preparing our uh, uh, tool to adapt this and give uh, more flexibility uh, to the users. So a lot of things are uh, coming. Well, happy to hear that as well, looking forward yeah. to them. Yeah. Uh, maybe just quickly wrapping up because I see some questions also popping up on my, uh, on my, on my dashboard and I think uh, I'm not going to go much into detail about uh, the challenges, but what I hear from both of you is that uh, we are moving towards from a micro KPI to a macro KPI strategic uh, approach in both your domains. So what you mentioned is it's not expense management only, it's spend management now. So we are looking at it more strategically. And in an in, in RPA perspective, in a process automation perspective, we are not only now just looking at bits and pieces of KPIs, but we are talking about business process management, So, which can go beyond in terms of addressing one small uh, portion of the business and just put a Band-Aid on things, but uh, rather just uh, help technology leverage your strategy in that sense. So I think that is the opportunity for the uh, CFOs and finance leaders in that sense. Of course, there are many questions around that, especially on the AI domain. But uh, well, of course, uh, I'm being reminded by the audience as well on some uh, portions of the AI. But let's, uh, you know, after having wrapped up the uh, session portion of things, bringing AI and RPA together, uh, I also want to share some of the questions that uh, our audience has shared with you. So, well, the first question is, I think, more is related to Phil. Uh, so I'll address it with you. And then if you have any, uh, just uh, any extra points that please feel free to add. But um, how do you see AI in terms of data and security? Because you are touching upon financial data, which is quite uh, sensitive. Uh, how do you position uh, Yokoi's AI platform in that sense? Yes, absolutely. So security is something, if, if you serve customers like us, like more to the mid-size to enterprise segment, and especially we have quite a lot of banks as customers, security needs to be at the top. It needs mm -hmm. to be top priority. It's, by the way, the reason we are currently not allowed to release. Uh, we, we have built a really cool chatbot based on, on, on ChatGPT, yeah. um, where we wanted to have exactly that feeling for a, for a finance person to not having to look for it anymore. But just one chatbot, can I have 
all spent data from last week for that cost center in a Excel format. Something like that. I, I mean, to be honest, I'm using it on our test platform, <laughs> so I love it. Um, but we are not allowed to release it mm -hmm. because we cannot guarantee that the data is then not being used by a third party. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are having, uh, we have a lot of troubles releasing really cool, very new stuff there because of the security aspect. Mm -hmm. So everything we do, we can guarantee that the data is being ring fence being protected. You can also say that um, it's being used on an anonymized basis to learn or to train the models or not. You know, you can, I mean, we have a lot of options there to make sure that as a company, your risk appetite is basically mm -hmm. is, is covered. That's why mm -hmm. our legal team is also is huge. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to make sure that our all our vendors and our customers um, are know exactly what is being done with the data. And also it's in line with their strategy mm -hmm. because there are companies that are, that, that are more early adopters and they're more willing to take some more risk than others, which is absolutely fine. Um, but for us, it has highest priority, mm -hmm. and that's why we are currently not able to release some of the features, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Oh, well. It okay. will come, it yeah. will come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, looking forward to that as well. Uh, Murat, is there anything that you want to add on top of this, or we have another question that might okay. be of relevance to you? Maybe next question. Okay, well, yeah. at least we this is... cover different topics. Because I, I see that's uh, specifically saying robotic force automation, so I'll yeah. just address it with okay. you. So, uh, any recommendations? One of our audience uh, attendees asked that if you have any recommendations for early stage uh, companies who want to jump on the boat of yeah. process automation. Yeah, that's a good uh, question, actually, because uh, it is not technology only. Mm -hmm. We also culture change, right? We change the uh, way of working. Also, uh, that's why we need uh, you guys. We need, uh, when we go to the customers, uh, we go with the consulting partners to uh, analyze the uh, customer and build a digital workforce strategy their roadmap uh, and identify uh, certain uh, of the gaps and uh, address with them, how to address with the RPA and build a kind of RPA center of excellence. Then uh, we need to pilot uh, with the, uh, you know, we shouldn't aim to big, but uh, little. Mm -hmm. So it is a change. So then we need to buy in uh, the employees because without supporting uh, support from the employees this technology doesn't uh, live uh, no survive in the, yeah. in, the uh, count, uh, in the company what we see so far if the customer believes in this technology they really get uh, most out of it what we see so far is uh, the, all the customers who believe really get uh, a lot of uh, benefits from the rpa but uh, starting, uh, you know, small is very, yeah. I think, the key word here. Yeah. Identifying the business pain and then yeah. just beginning small and then uh, yeah, build expanding, up. building yeah. up the capabilities and the competencies. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, if they, when they learn, then even uh, yeah, our, tool, yeah, some, our customers started uh, citizen developers. Mm -hmm. you now, yeah. initially, it, uh, let's say the IT or some interested uh, employees uh, adopted, Later, they trained uh, the citizen developers, and uh, they started to automate their processes. So, uh, we, they, but before we go there, we have to start uh, small, and uh, also someone really needs to uh, know the support this technology from mm -hmm. the uh, management. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, it is very important. I like the terminology citizen uh, develop, develop, yeah. developer. So I think it makes sense. Uh, I have two more questions, but. Well, uh, considering that we have two, three more minutes left, I want to skip them and just give you one final word if you want to you know, wrap up what uh, you want to share with the audience as well. And then we'll uh, unfortunately be closing the session for today. And Phil, we can begin with you. Yes, very quickly. Um, I mean, spend management is a thing. <laughs> it's not expense management anymore. It's not invoice processing and it's not card management. It's not three tools, three silos functions, silo functions. It's not three apps. It's not three tools, not three or five integrations that you need at the end. It is one process because everyone needs to understand all the cost data that are flowing through a company and in real time, make it easy for your people, give them one app. They don't care whether they're approving an invoice or a receipt or a card transaction. They truly don't. 
we want to make sure that time for repetitive tasks is minimized. We want to use AI for all the repetitive tasks and only pick on outliers and exceptions to look at them manually. The rest needs to be fully automated end to end. Perfect. Thank you very much, Phil. Yeah. Uh, and Murat, maybe one final word from you as well? Uh, yeah, for, uh, for the companies who uh, didn't experiment, uh, experiment the RPA, the automation, I, I strictly recommend uh, it is really easy to use and uh, we, can, we are happy to help them to adopt this technology and walk through uh, with them until the point that uh, they feel uh, they are safe and they can continue to uh, use because new things are coming and we should be uh, get ready for it. Yeah, I totally agree. That's why we have you today with us. Well, maybe uh, to bring this session to its end. So at EY as well, for us, it's very important to address the challenges of the CFOs from a technology perspective as well as business perspective. So we always believe that first having the business pain point, helping them with identifying it and then setting the target operating model as the goal and then plugging in the right solutions to address that in a strategic manner is, is the key. And we know that without technology, we can't do it. That's why we have a valuable ecosystem like Yoko and uh, Robusta in the sense today with us. I'm really happy to have hosted you today at the EY office. I hope that we will have more uh, chances to welcome you here as well. And uh, well, thanks for being with us. And for the audience, uh, we have a call to action. So you will see the uh, QR codes of our um, speakers today. So including myself, uh, Murat, and Phil. So uh, feel free to add us on LinkedIn. Feel free to get in touch with us. And we would be happy to help you to well, shape the future of your company from a finance perspective, leveraging the capabilities of our platforms and partners uh, in different technology components. Well, uh, thank you very much again. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all a pleasant Tuesday.